Hello, my name is Arun Gupta. In this screencast, I will show you how easy it is to create a simple web service using NetBeans IDE 6.8. Use this web service to access data from a database and deploy it on Glassfish version 3. So let's get started. In the IDE, right click, create a new project of the type Java Web Application. Click on Next. and name the project as Hello Web Service 3. Then you click on Next. The chosen server is Glassfish version 3 and this is a Java EE 6 web application. We can click on Next. Additional frameworks may be chosen here but for now let's click on Finish. This creates my template project. It has an index.jsp but for our purpose, we're going to add a new web service to it. Right click on the project, new web service. Let's call the service as hello service. And this is going to be in the package server. And we're creating the web service from scratch. Click on finish here. And now you see a new node over here by the name web services. This is our template code. This can also be seen in the design mode. You can add the operations over here and Glassfish actually comes with Metro which is a highly secure, reliable and transactional web services stack. So you can add those quality of service attributes very easily over here. We're going to keep it simple and add a simple operation for now. Call it as say hello. The return type is string. Add a parameter of the name index. Change the type to int and click on OK our operation definition gets updated. Let's see it in the source mode. All the annotations and everything is accordingly updated for us. Now, in order to implement this business logic, we want to access data from a database. So, let's retrieve some data from the database in that. Right click here, create an entity class from database. We're going to use a pre-configured data source, JDBC sample, which comes with NetBeans IDE. Otherwise, you can easily create a new data source, specify a new database from here as well. So let's take the JDBC sample database. Here is a list of tables that is already existing. Let's pick the customer table for now. Click on add and see how the related tables are automatically included. Click on next. It shows me the class names that are going to get generated, location, project. All I want to do is change the package name from server to model and I'm going to create a new persistence unit. This is my persistence unit name. This is my Eclipse link, which is the JPA 2.0 reference implementation is the default persistence provider. And I click on create. And that's it. We can click on next and see other default values. But for now, let's click on finish. And this generates my JPA compliant classes. So if I click on customer, you can see all the classes are coming from Java X persistence package, which is a standard Java EE 6 package. You can see entity table, standard annotations, and there are certain named queries that are generated for me for the simplicity and ease of use. So let's go back to our web service and inject the persistence unit that we just created. And we're going to call this entity manager factory as with the variable name emf and let's fix our imports in the code what we're going to do from the entity manager factory we're going to create an entity manager then we're going to create a named query and we're going to use one of the named queries that is automatically generated for us from the named query we're going to get the result list and from the result list we're going to index it from the parameter that is given to us and this is returning of the type customer so we're going to cast it to customer and let's fix our imports one more time and in the response we're going to append the string hello and we're going to take customer dot get name and there you go so that's our business logic implemented nice and easy let's right click on the server and on this project and deploy it on the server so now the project gets deployed, nice and easy. Right click on the web service node and say test web service.
So this shows me the simple tester page. I can click on my WSDL file, see the WSDL file, how it looks like. Um, for now, let's invoke the method. So if I specify the input value one, this is going to, this in one value is gonna go back to my web service, which is then gonna talk to the database, retrieve the result set and index the first element and show the result back. So click on say hello. This is the request parameters. This is the response value. This is the SOAP request. Now you can see number one, and this is a response. Let's try one more time. Let's give the value four and say, say hello. And here, of course, you see method parameters, method response, SOAP request, and SOAP response. So in a very simple and easy manner, you could create a simple web service deployed in Glassfish version three and accessing data from an underlying database. More details about this screencast can be found on Glassfish on my blog, actually blogs.sun.com slash Arun Gupta. In terms of Glassfish, you can go to glassfish.org and you can find all the details about glassfish.org on this website. Thank you.